I'm Pastor Amy Ritchie with the Manchester Church of the Brethren. I'm so happy to be with you on an afternoon for Evensong Contemplations. We are into Lent, that hard ground of winter freeze here in the north. That season that feels like waiting will go on forever. That time when we just want to skip over the germination happening in our deep withins from our desire to just know the light colors and relief of Easter. Lent has at its word origin an old English lean towards springtime, the just before where we are right now. We are entering into this evensong from a place of poetics. Theopoetics is a term just gaining ground in wider circles than just theological poetry ponderers. It is different than poetry. It is different than theology. It is a movement away from the structure and surety of theology, the systematics of dogma, into space and time out of time where potential has pulled in like the life force in the bulb of a paper white until the conditions are perfect for the arrival of the bloom to burst forth. Lent brings us to the hard side of life. Darkness, shadow, shame, suffering, despair, disappointment, anger, and insecurity. Poetics of Lent unpack these elements that we often keep hidden away so that instead of being something to be healed from, we learn that they are the ointment, the balm, the way of our healing. The way is through. It is like a dance of what we want and what is to get to what we want. And once we dance through Lent with these partners of seemingly opposites, we see that we are just dancing through the fullness of life. The dance partners of Lent are dark with her sister light, lost with her sister found, wound with her sister healed, broken with her sister whole. It is only our longing for good that we assume one partner is lesser and one is greater, but Lent is all about the life fire of the germination that takes place in the dark recesses below ground, the night of the lightless soil, the formation within the womb. We need both partners and all the partners that will cut in to the dance that is happening. This even song let's step into that dance of dark with her sister light and with the more pointed Lenten dance partners of waiting and her sister liminality. Waiting. We wait for the snow to melt. We wait for the temperature to rise from 32 degrees to 55 degrees. We wait for the sun to shine through the snowy clouds. We wait to heal bones. We wait to plant a garden. We wait to gather together again. It is a sense that we know what we are waiting for and likely know when it will come and maybe even knowing the how of its arrival. We wait with trust. Liminality, we wait to heal hearts. We wait for a next that we sense deep inside our beings. We wait to be heard. We wait to hear the sacred song within our very beings. How long, O oh Lord, is the cry of liminal space? We wait with unknowing. The theopoetics of Lent take us into the amorphous space of liminality where we just don't know. We don't know what we're waiting on. We don't know when we'll know. We don't know when something might arrive. We don't know how. It is a place of drift, 
of contemplation, like patience that sees beyond what is there into the holes, into the void, like swans that show us something that we can only perceive from our peripheral vision, like waiting for what is about to knock on the door, but we cannot yet see. It is a place for the ineffable. I invite you now into this space of the poetics of waiting, that your Lent may continue with maybe a bit more comfort in the discomfort, a bit less hurry to get through, a little more pause and breath, a little more nudge from God. I have chosen three pieces of poetics. The first from the ancient writings of the Sufi poet Rumi, the second from the contemporary nature mystic Mary Oliver, and the final piece from my favorite living poet, David White. I will read to you, and you can relax, close your eyes, and then we will sit in silence. This pause of silence will happen after each poetic reading, and after the third, I'll close our even song in prayer. May the sacred slip and swirl into your guts and heart and head and into your sinews and forgotten places as we listen together. Rumi writes, I've said before that every craftsman searches for what's not there to practice their craft. A builder looks for the rotten hole where the roof caved in. A water carrier picks the empty pot. A carpenter stops at the house with no door. Workers rush toward some hint of emptiness, which they then start to fill. Their hope, though, is for emptiness. So don't think you must avoid it. It contains what you need. Dear soul, if you were not friends with the vast nothing inside, why would you always be casting your net into it? and waiting so patiently. The invisible ocean has given you such abundance. The invisible ocean has given you such abundance and God has allowed some magical reversal to occur. Mary Oliver and her poem, Swan. Did you see it, drifting all night on the Black River? Did you see it in the morning, rising into the silvery air, an armful of white blossoms, a perfect commotion of silk and linen as it leaned into the bondage of its wings, a snowbank? a bank of lilies biting the air with its black beak? Did you hear it, fluting and whistling a shrill, dark music, like the rain pelting the trees, like a waterfall knifing down the black ledges? And did you see it, finally, just under the clouds, a white cross streaming across the sky, its feet like black leaves, its wings like the stretching light of the river. And did you feel it in your heart, how it pertained to everything? And have you, too, finally figured out what beauty is for? And have you changed your life? Dear 
David White and his writing waiting to go on. It must be we are waiting for the perfect moment. It must be under all the struggle we want to go on. It must be that deep down, we are creatures getting ready for when we are needed. It must be that waiting for the listening ear or the appreciative word for the right woman or the right man or the right one or even the right moment just to ourselves, we are getting ready to be ready and nothing else. Like this moment, just before the evening light arrives, working by the kitchen window, sensing a deep down symmetry in every blessed thing. The way that everything, unbeknownst to us, is preparing to meet us too just on the other side of the door, someone is about to knock. Just on the other side of the door, someone is about to knock and our life is about to change. And finally, after all these years rehearsing behind the curtain, we might just be ready to go on. Please pray with me. O Creator, who moves with us alongside, blending until we are no longer distinct, your love resides with us and we reside with you. And the next, the waiting, the unknown, no longer matters, for we are in you. In the name of Jesus, who sought solitude for holy reconnection. Amen. Friends, thank you for being together for Evensong.